The PAA6 is a dual-channel audio analyzer with nine unique functions including RTA, RT60, FFT, THD plus noise, level meter, scope, phase checker, LEQ, and polarity checker. The PAA6 has a wide range of possible uses. It can be used in cinemas and theaters, live sound installations, project studios, in education and training, for testing building acoustics, in occupational health and safety, quality assurance, product test and servicing, research and development, and can even be used by automotive engineers for testing engine noise. The RTA is perhaps the most commonly used audio analysis function. This gives visual depictions of various frequencies and can help engineers sort out equalizers in live setups or check problem frequencies where feedback may be concerned. To begin on the PAA6, you need to enter the setup menu of the function you're planning to use. Here you can select a few various setup features. You can select whether you want to use microphone or line input. You can select whether there's a peak hold time. And most importantly, perhaps, you can select the weighting. There is A, B, C, and flat weighting available. To understand weighting, you need to understand that human hearing has a particular frequency curve and that some frequencies we can hear better than others. The weighting helps the analyzer understand this and provide us with results relevant to our hearing range. A weighting is perhaps the most commonly used as it most closely mimics human hearing. However, when you go outdoors, it becomes less accurate and C weighting may be applied. C weighting is also most commonly used, for example, with Dolby systems. If we play pink noise through a Dolby system, when we get to about 83 decibels, we can take this as the base level, as this is the standard that Dolby uses, as do a lot of manufacturers of professional cinema systems. Most movie theaters and cinemas do employ this base level. Flat weighting, on the other hand, can be used for measurement of audio systems where no actual hearing is necessary. It's commonly used when setting up signal processes like EQs, effects and such. Running pink noise or a sine wave through a signal processor or a mixer or other device and using a flat weighting will give you more accurate results. The next function is the FFT, or Fast Fourier Transform. Now we don't actually need to understand the mathematics behind an FFT to use it, we just need to know the application. An FFT will give very very fine detail of frequencies otherwise invisible on RTAs. This way we can see harmonics or distortion otherwise unseen. So if a signal processor or other device, just for example, is emitting noise, we can use the FFT to find out at exactly which frequency the noise is located and better deal with it. The next function is RT60. The RT stands for reverb time, while the 60 means the time it takes the signal to decay 60 dB. When we talk, sing or play music, sound reflects off the walls and ceilings. Using the RT60, we can get a better idea of how serious this is and decide to use foam padding calcium nitrate boards or other absorbing materials to help combat this. The next function is THD plus N, or total harmonic distortion plus noise. A lot of measurement devices only measure the total harmonic distortion without factoring in the noise. The PA6 also includes the noise in the results, as discounting it will only give you an idea of the distortion alone and will completely discount any noise that is added to the signal by the device. The fifth function is meter, which has two primary test modes. The first is through microphone, which lets you measure sound pressure level, and the second is line input, which lets you measure dBU, dBV, or voltage. dBU is commonly used for professional application and is referenced to 0.775 volts while dBV is commonly used for consumer application and is referenced to 0 volts, 600 ohms. The next function is the phase. This allows us to compare the phase between two different signals. Because the PAA6 is stereo orientated, it helps us to create detailed Lisa Jules curves on screen. This enables us to see the audio as it's heard, whether it's a guitar, piano, or other sound. The vertical line represents the left channel, while the horizontal line represents the right. Next we have the polarity function. In live setups, often our speakers can sound unusual without us understanding why. Sometimes this is simply because the positive and negative polarities of our speaker are the wrong way around. If you run the polarity signal through the speaker and use the polarity function to take the measurement, you will be able to determine whether the speaker is in or out of phase. 
This is simply indicated by a positive or negative symbol on screen. Next we have the LEQ, or Equivalent Continuous Noise Level. When it comes to noise regulation issues, often the average noise in a particular area can't exceed a certain amount over a period of time. The LEQ helps us calculate this in one octave resolution. Users are able to select their LEQ time between 1 minute and 48 hours, and the weighting can be selected between A, B, C and flat as previously discussed. So these are just a few of the special functions of the PAA6, all of which can be accessed by the touchscreen or onboard controls. The PAA6 has different unit settings for various uses. SPL, or sound pressure level, is used for microphone input, while DBU, DBV and volts can all be selected when using the line inputs. Users can also adjust the response time, meaning the reaction of the microphone can be faster or slower. So for example, when adjusting our system, we can set the response time at one second, play pink noise, and set a C weighting, which is standard for speaker adjustment. Regardless of whether it's a family or public theater, at a one meter distance, a baseline of 83 dB is a commonly used reference point for high and low frequencies. This is the standard used by Dolby and SMPTE RP200. So that's it for now for the PAA6. If you still have questions, feel free to contact us through our website at www.phonic.com or send an email directly to info at phonic.com. You can also find us on Facebook or YouTube and ask a question through either of these sites.